You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. One of the hottest teams in college basketball is right here in Memphis. The Tigers have won 10 in a row. We'll recap a perfect week. Sit down with Nicholas Jordan. I look ahead to games against USF at Tulane. It's The Penny Hardaway Show. Let's go. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser of Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. You can't get better than perfect, and that's what the Tigers are in the American. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Voloshin. And I'm Matt Field. Memphis moves to 4-0 in AAC play. Let's check out the highlights against UTSA and Wichita State. Tigers had to do a little extra work to get past the University of Texas San Antonio, the Roadrunners, in their first year in the AAC, coming to Memphis and earning some respect. UTSA had Memphis down two points at the half, and they were able to force overtime by continuing to play hard and continuing to knock down threes. But despite all that, they couldn't stop the Tigers from knocking them out. Devon Quinley had another great game finishing with 25 points, including this huge four-point play with just under four minutes left in overtime to give the Tigers a four-point lead. Memphis able to hold on to win 107 to 101. David Jones also played well. He led the Tigers with 26 points and 11 rebounds. The Memphis Tigers took their perfect AAC record to Wichita State to face the Shockers Sunday, and the Shockers were hoping to shock Memphis. And in the first half, it looked like they had a chance to do just that. Wichita State playing Memphis tough in the first 20 minutes. Tigers were up just 49 to 46 at the half. But after the half, Memphis got activated. David Jones got activated. He was a bucket. Jones finishing with 19. Jaquan Walton. Jay walked his way to 23 points. And Javon Quinley coming up huge again. Quinley with 23 points and 11 assists. And the Tigers letting Wichita State know. They're still in Kansas, Toto. Memphis blowing them out, 112 to 86. Coach, we are halfway through the season, but you've just hit a mark. You've gotten to over 120 wins in five and a half years. That's 69% of the time you play you win. You have beaten national champions. You've beaten Hall of Famers that are coaches. Talk a little bit about this experience. And do you even surprise yourself with this success? Well, first, giving credit to God, obviously, for uh, having the opportunity to be able to do this. Secondly, to all my players, because I wouldn't be able to do it without my players, because they were the ones that went out and got it done for me. I just gave them the game plan, and they got it done. And then the coaches that I've coached with that have helped me along the way. It's been a, a total team effort. But for me, it's just, I feel like my hard work is just paying off. I work really hard. I study all the time. I'm a student of the game. I really respect the game. So I try not to leave anything. Uh, I try to cross my T's and dot my I's in every area. And then to have 120 wins it's early in my career is pretty good. Focusing in on this season, you've talked a lot in the past and even this season about how you feel like this program does not get the respect it deserves nationally. Now, you guys have rolled through this non-conference schedule, good start to conference play, top 15 team in the country. How good does that feel that people across the country are starting to take notice of what's going on here? Oh, it makes me feel good, you know, and we knew we had to win to get the respect. We, we felt like we did some things earlier in the season that would, would give us, you know, a nod, and we didn't get the nod, so we kept plugging away. And now we've earned everything that we've gotten. That makes us feel better that we've earned it. Now, I know you dissect, you just talked about that. Tell me what you like about this team midway through. Tell me where you really have to work, and I'm going to guess some of that is blocking out on rebounding. Early in the season, that would give us a grade of a B because we do have some things that are glaring. But the one thing that I love about this team is that we can win any game. You know, we, these guys don't give in, they don't give up, and they fight. 
The flip side of that, we definitely have to do re rebounding and then keep sharing the ball. We're trying to get the 20 assists a game. We haven't reached that yet, and that's what we're going to continue to try to reach. Kind of on that note, a big theme coming into the season was how would this pecking order be established with a bunch of guys who are the men at their last places? Do you feel like that's coming along and you're getting closer to that optimal spot? Yeah, well, consistency has kind of made the cream rise to the top, meaning like David Jones has been the guy that's been more consistent, so we kind of lean on him for scoring, even though it's a group effort because it can be anyone's night uh, because of the talent that we have. But David Jones has kind of separated himself with the consistency of scoring on a nightly basis, but still have so many other guys that are capable of doing that as well. The other guy on this team that I think is really critical, I call him the conductor, and that's Q. Uh, Javon Quinterly seems to really set the pace for you. When he plays well, it seems as if the team plays well. Yeah, well, he is the captain. He's a an extension of me out there on the floor. And he's a terrific player with terrific talent. And he understands now, coming from a different system, it took him a while, but he's still out there. He's going to compete and he's going to lead. And we're, we're blessed to have him. I want to ask you a little bit about intangibles off the court. We all talk about mental health now with student athletes all the time. You've had two things occur here. One, you lost Caleb Mills for the year. What was that like collectively for your team psyche? I know they were in shock in Tulsa. There was no doubt in my mind about that. And the other thing is the constant pressure. Like you're in a position, if you look at net rankings and everything else, where you can't lose a game. That has to take its toll at some point. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, first to talk about Caleb, uh, really wanted to cry when he was down on the floor just screaming and in pain because I was like, you know, it's bigger than basketball. This kid's career might be over, and he's fighting on the team, the best team he's ever played on, really, where he's been a big, huge part of it, defensively and offensively. Obviously, he played in Houston, and they won. And to be his last year, and to have that happen, it crushed all of us. And uh, we still haven't gotten over it, and everything that we do now is for him, because we definitely want to play for him. And the, uh, the second side of that, is that I explained that the non-conference was pressure because we needed to beat those teams to show our worth. And now it's way more pressure in the conference because we're supposed to beat these teams. And that's just the, the way it works here. Caleb, obviously it's gonna be tough to flat out replace him. Who are some guys that you're looking to to pick up some of the slack that he leaves behind? Well, you have to look at Carl Sharon Front, Jalen Young, Jaden Hardaway, Ashton Hardaway, Jonathan Pierre. Those five guys by committee I think before this is all said and done, they're going to have to do it by committee to help, you know, replace Caleb. Car Carl has earned your trust enough as a freshman to be thrown in that mix as well. Yeah, I think during some games that it'd be good to get him out there because of his, his defensive intensity, and hopefully he grows in those moments, but defensively elite, and uh, we're going to have to continue to find a way to get him in there. Tulsa, SMU, obviously a couple of close calls, JQ, clutch in both of those games. Do you feel like you talked about Adversity is a good thing. Close things are a good thing, but maybe a bit of a wake up call to guys that maybe looked at this conference and weren't sure what the competition level is going to be like that you guys do have to bring it every night. Yeah, well, you know, we had a 14 point lead at Tulsa and relaxed and they almost won the game. And then, uh, you know, to come home against SMU, who was a really good team and barely get a win down 15 at one point and to get that win, that, that helps me as a coach to say, all right, we know that this conference is definitely capable you know, we have to go into every game, not looking at the name on the, the front of the chest, but look at ourselves and say, hey, this team could beat us at any moment if we're not playing at our level. Nicholas Jordan wasn't the flashiest name the Tigers picked up in the portal this offseason, but his impact has been felt right away. We'll sit down with the big man. Coming up next. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Welcome back to the Penny Hardaway Show. There's been a theme developing over the last couple of years. Penny likes to go after other AAC players when they hit the transfer portal. This year, Nicholas Jordan was one of them. After putting up big performances against Memphis over the years, this season, he's doing it in a Tiger uniform. Jordan grew up just outside New York City in Clifton, New Jersey. I was a multi-sport athlete as a kid. Sports-wise, I started out playing baseball, t-ball from the jump. From there, I think middle school, played my first basketball team, eighth grade, football. Sophomore year, I finally was like, from there, I was like, I'm gonna rock out, play basketball the rest of the way. I think it's a sport for me. Been passionate, working towards my goals since then with basketball. What did 
basketball become serious in terms of you realizing that you had the ability to play it at a higher level? I don't know. I think it was sophomore year summer going to junior year. So I was playing for the NJ players and I played for that team every year AAU. And that's on, they were on the EYBL Nike circuit and playing on that platform and having college coach at your game and obviously like top tier athletes. And at first I was a little bit fearful and I doubted myself, but as I kept playing, it was like, it just, it was natural to me and I was able to compete and sometimes play better than these guys, so. Is there a moment you remember in that run where you kind of overcame that fear, where something clicked in your head that you belonged? Yeah, 100%. I think we played against Seattle Rotary. That team had Jaden McDaniels, Paulo Bancaro was a freshman, he was on that team. I was playing 17s and had a really, really good game. I think I had like 15, three or four blocks. Probably, I don't know if I had double digit rebounds, but I know I had a ton of boards and a lot of schools were super interested in me and all that. So I was, I was excited. And like I said, I kind of shocked myself and I was literally just out there playing and my teammates, luckily they were able to find me. I got some easy dunks, things like that, so. Jordan played high school ball at Immaculate Conception High School in Montclair, New Jersey. But at that time, in his words, he was scared to let his wings out and fly. Um, didn't have complete confidence in myself and I definitely wasn't uh, showcasing my whole arsenal. I was more of just taking whatever was given and nothing else, nothing more. Always playing my hardest, always playing for the team, always trying to win, but like I said, wasn't showing nothing off. But a year at Covenant College Prep ended up being enormous at Steady Up Jordan for success. Uh, it meant a lot. It brought me a lot of confidence. It let me know that I could not only play with these guys, like I pointed out earlier, but I could dominate and I could be that guy. And like I said, also exploring that arsenal, exploring shooting threes, playing off the dribble and things like that, because I had never done that in an organized game. I had done it outside and I knew I was capable, but like I said, I was kind of fearful to put my wings out and fly. And when I had no choice and I went out there and didn't, I was capable of doing it. It definitely upped my confidence a ton. Jordan's initial college recruitment consisted mainly of low majors in the Northeast, but there was one bigger exception. Temple came calling and Jordan ended up calling it home for three years. I felt like Temple was the school for me. I liked, I kind of saw the school before and I liked the environment of the school. Aaron McKee was the coach. Uh, I liked his vibe, obviously his history, playing with Allen Iverson and playing for the Sixers. I feel like I could trust him. So I kind of chose Temple from there. In the city of brotherly love, Jordan built some great bonds with his teammates. However, the Owls never made the NCAA tournament during his time in Philly. It wore on me. Obviously you want to win as many games as possible and it's frustrating. Like I said, when you have a bond with those guys, it's even more frustrating because you want to do it and you want to do it together. But like I said, it was the experience. It was something we all need and we all learn from it all. It made us all greater. When you decide to enter the portal, what's going into the thought process there? Um, well, I was already considering it. Uh, just the environment of college basketball and what I experienced, the struggles throughout the year and how I was being used. And I wanted to, again, explore my game. And my coach got fired and it kind of just supercharged that. I was like, all right, I think it's time to go. Especially you don't want to be at a school where your old furniture and they're just like, all right, we'll just rock with it. But you know, it might come down to, they might want some new furniture. But um, from there, I was pretty confident going into the portal. Playing in the AAC for his entire collegiate career, Jordan had faced Memphis three times previously. That gave the Tigers a leg up in their pursuit of him. What was it about here? Do you, I mean, you played these guys a bunch over your first three years. Did that play any factor at all? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I saw how these guys played and how they played freely and how coach empowered them. And that goes back to me saying, I want to be able to explore my game and play my game. And also I know I could get on the court with my talking, my defense. And that's something that uh, coach Penny really appreciated and noticed about me that I'm a defensive player. So, um, from there, seeing how they play, I already had that down pack and now building a relationship, building trust with the coaches and seeing what they're all about and seeing what the school's about. And from there, I was able to make my decision. You seem to always have this knack for making winning plays, whether it's 
offensive rebounds or running the floor or block shots or whatever it might be. Where does that come from? I want to say it comes from always playing hard, which I think that's the simplest answer, always playing hard. When you're always playing hard, you're always spreading the floor, you're eventually, they're eventually going to find you. If you jump to block every shot, you're eventually going to block a shot. Just always pushing myself, pushing myself mentally, where maybe you're saying, oh, I don't have to do that now, but doing it every single time, because it, it always pays off. Like you said, you end up making the winning play. Do you take pride in being a player that can make an impact without having to dominate the ball? 100%. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely different. You got a lot of ball dominant dudes in college and being able to impact the game in different ways is definitely something I take pride on, whether it be cutting and clearing the lane so someone could drive because the backside is clear, whatever it may be, sealing off the lane, running the floor, now they kick it to the corner. There's very little things, little intrinsic things that are going on throughout the game that people might not notice, but I know it's appreciated in the locker room by coaches. So being able to have that impact is important, needed, and I'm glad to do it. I feel like you kind of flew under the radar a little bit when you got here. How cool has it been? Maybe you like flying under the radar, but to make the impact that you've had when maybe people didn't expect this from you coming here. I mean, I've always kind of flew under the radar, 100%. But my game, it speaks volumes. And like you said, I, I've been making an impact, and I think I can make even more an imp impact, and I'm excited to do that. And I'm excited to keep playing off these dudes because they have such great games. They've made my life easier. And like I said, I'm excited to make a bigger impact and make their life easier. And we just keep bouncing off each other. Home against the USF team with a new head coach and a trip to the Big Easy to battle Tulane. We'll preview those games coming up next. You're watching the Penny Hardaway Show presented by Cook's Pest Control. Let's take a look at the AutoZone Road Ahead. It's a busy week. South Florida at home and then down to Fogelman in New Orleans, Tulane. Always a tough place to play. Yeah, South Florida at home. All I say to that is just protect home court. You have to protect home court no matter who you're playing. If you're playing the Warriors, the Golden State Warriors, you have to protect home court. That's my whole mentality. So I don't disrespect anyone, but anyone coming into our building, uh, we should think, hey, it's a win. We got to go out there and take care of business at home because the road wins are so hard to come by, which leads me to Tulane. It's always hard to play in that small building. Tulane, obviously, they took care of you guys twice in the regular season last year. I know you took the home loss personally. Then you guys get them back big time in the conference tournament. Do you feel like you're even with them now, that the conference tournament win even things up? No, because they beat us two times uh, in the regular season. And they, they play good basketball, man. They, they're well coached. That zone always poses a problem. And we've been struggling with zone all year, but I'm hoping that game, we shoot the ball the best that we've ever shot it down in that, in that gym. But it's always a battle. But no, we have to, we have to win two, two regular season games in a row to make it even. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. The trip to Fogelman may be tough, but who doesn't like going to New Orleans? Back with a wrap in just a minute. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next Sunday night. Have a great week, everybody. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser of Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, Head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.